What's happening, people? And welcome to this week's episode of It's All Black Academic with your host, myself, Jordan Jarrett Bryan. And just before we get into our panel and our debate for this week, I want to do a shout out as usual to our socials. Please be following us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. You've all got accounts, so please get on those accounts and follow us on there. You know what to do. Well, here on the channel here, so subscribe to us, Blackademic TV. Click the button. It's a red one. Click it right now, please. And also, if podcasts are more your thing, we are now on the Acast platform. So please download the Acast app and you can find us via the search option there. It's all Black Academic, the podcast. There's some extra content on there as well. So on this week's show, I am looking forward to this debate because it's something that I know I'm going to get some, as usual, some fantastic expertise and some, some views and some opinions. And to do so, I'm going to get them from my man here, Ezekiel Taiwo, hey. Derek Awusu, and Kemi and Zerum. Gentlemen, how are we doing? Good. good. All good? Yeah. 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 All, all good. well? Sun's yeah. shining. The sun is shining and it's a, it's a right. good day. It's, it's a good day. Um, I want to debate with you guys. Simple question that I think comes with multifaceted and maybe complex answers. What is masculinity in 2019? What is masculinity? Mm. What, what is, what is it, what is it for you? Mm. Um, for me, what is it? I, I have to, I have to throw back to just the, uh, generic understanding of what masculinity is mm. what i've been what, what i've been taught as a young boy mm -hmm. is about being uh you know it's about strength resilience mm -hmm. being being uh you know dominate don't be dominated mm -hmm. um it's, it's about being stoic like you know not showing you know getting through it mm -hmm. you know so being a man's man mm -hmm. um you know in, industrious all these words to describe um what, what it takes to be masculine what it is today i think it's definitely changed um, it's not something that I necessarily look to identify with in terms of masculinity. It, it, for me, it is what it is. I, it's a trait that you have or you don't. Mm -hmm. Um, so I don't think it's moved from what, what it, it was, was been. Um, um, back then. What? Yeah. But Derek, what about you? Is, is it for you? What does the word masculinity mean to you? To me, it kind of sounds like a death sentence, really. <laughs> okay, go on. Um, it traps you, you know, mm. it really trapped. Masculinity is a trap. I am, um, I don't believe, personally don't believe that it's something that should exist at all. Okay. Um, you know, and it just, it stops you relating to people in certain ways. It, it stops you from expressing yourself in certain ways. You close yourself off. And I can 100% say that I believe that masculinity or the crisis of masculinity or whatever is responsible for the majority of well, for the the high male suicide rates in the country, it's mm -hmm. just because we don't open up, we don't want to talk, we want to try and handle everything ourselves. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it really, really feels like a death sentence. So I always try and separate myself from, away from that. anything, you know, masculine or whatever. I just, you know, I just try and do Derek. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I hear you. Um, Kemi, what about you? What does the word mean to you? Yeah, you know, what Derek said really resonated. <clears throat> I think we as men, we absolutely get trapped into this false idea of what we should be in those tropes of strength and you know, resilience is, an, is another matter, mm -hmm. um, but not being dominated, just picking some of the phrases mm -hmm. that you used, I think it prevents us from being human. Mm -hmm. and, and actually, I'm much more interested in um, kind of pragmatic or lived examples of masculinity. So when I think about masculinity, I prefer to, the fr to frame that as what am I like as a friend, as a colleague, as a son, as a father, as an uncle, mm -hmm. as a nephew? Mm -hmm. um, because that's a much more interesting, it's a much more interesting and useful discussion in a way, because then that allows you to, you know, if, if, if you're talking about what, what is it to be, what is it to be a son? Well, actually, that then allows me to love mm -hmm. and it allows me to care. Mm -hmm. If I talk about m masculinity as a father, that allows me to nurture. Mm -hmm. And these are things that are not masculine. But how can you be a father and not nurture? Mm -hmm. So um, it, it's I'm glad that we're at a stage now where we can discuss these things yeah. and not not necessarily so intellectually not feel trapped, although we may emotionally still find ourselves needing to be strong in situations where actually it would be much more honest to be vulnerable. Mm. And do do you go along with you know Derek mentioned there that it's it's a, almost a death sentence. Do you feel like men trying to adhere to the traditional definition of what masculine is, yeah. is dangerous? And it's more about, as you say, being an individual and looking at the different elements of the people in your life and how you deal with those people. 
there are many reasons why the male suicide rate is so much higher than the female suicide rate. What, much of this, I believe, can be explained by our the, the fact that we have been taught over the years that it's it is not okay to cry. It is not okay to say, "Oh, you man, you know what? I'm having a bad time, man. Give me a hug." Mm -hmm. or, or and 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 that, I, you know, I don't, I don't, I, I find it. I don't tend to cry. I, I don't tend to um, show emotion in that way. <laughs> no, because in a sense, I reserve that for things that are really, you know, I mean, the last time I, the last time I, funnily enough, the last time I cried was years ago. And it was when my very dear friend, when I was a boy, took his own life. Mm. So that, that in a sense, that's how it, for me, because I've been taught that that's the way men behave, that's how extreme something needs to be, to be yep. for me to shed tears when actually uh, I've shed tears of joy since then. When my daughters were born, yeah. Um, but uh, but uh, uh, it would be nice, I think, for us to be able to create a world where we can go with our emotions in a way that we've been taught that we can't over over hundreds of years. Mm. So, so, so Zeke, do you feel that you have to, because of the way you've almost been conditioned into believing what a man should do, mm. feel that you are guarded in releasing and when you release emotion? So, or do you, if you feel sad, you just cry because that's how you feel, or do you feel? I shouldn't really cry now because that's not what I should be doing. Mm. <clears throat> I think um, the points that you guys have brought up is, is, is real. And, and the reality is that masculinity is all good textbook. But when you're considering the conditions that black men, boys are in, mm -hmm. what for me that translates to strife and discord. Because mm -hmm. if you're telling a young man, you have to be a man, you have to be strong, you have to dominate, don't be dominated. But in your conditions and your environment, it feels like it's against you. Mm. Every day you're fighting, mm -hmm. fighting a battle. Mm -hmm. um, and what that looks like for me, I remember when I was younger, um, I would be sort of walking down the street and then a black guy looks like me walking the other way. Mm. And then you don't get that sense of, hey, man, mm. back then it was that mm. game, game face. Mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. The challenge, because yeah. I don't want you to dominate me. Mm -hmm. Um, that's every day when it's like that all the time that's when the mental issues come into play mm. and the reality is masculinity be a man's man you know be be you know win at all costs if you can lift 10k lift 15k it's all good and proper but then the conditions you're operating in is slightly different mm -hmm. so for me i think it's important now moving forward that we tell our boys and young men that being a man isn't about masculinity. Mm -hmm. it's, it's something else. It's like what you said. It's about taking responsibility of your own reality. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, being a man is about you saying, this is my family. This is my partner. These are my kids. I'm going to take care of them, period. Right? And I'll do what's necessary to do that. Mm -hmm. And I love them. And I'm not going to be ashamed to say, I love my family. Mm -hmm. Right? And when you're coming up against um, um, scenarios whereby you don't feel you're dominant, that, that's okay. Mm -hmm. Because what happens is, in my opinion, is that if you're always feeling you have to be the man, mm -hmm. right? And then you're not dominating. And then you're taking that home and you're trying to dominate at home. That kills a relationship. Mm -hmm. And then you'll find that people are in domestic uh, violent um, situations because they need to dominate somewhere. Mm -hmm. They've been told. And that's their outlet. Yeah, that's their outlet. And if you're not dominating at home, you feel like you're not a man. So then you leave that home and then you're, you know, so it, it's, it's really cyclical. And that's, it, it starts from telling a different story to our young men. Being a man isn't masculinity because that's a trait, that's a characteristic. Mm -hmm. If you don't have that, doesn't mean you're not a man. Mm -hmm. And today's modern masculinity means you are who you are. As long as you're a man and you're taking responsibility, integrity, being a man in your words, speak your word, create your own future, that's what then that's what a man is in my opinion. Mm. You said that you deliberately kind of pull away from the traditional kind of I suppose, qualities of what's identified as being a man or masculine. Yeah. How does that play out for you then? So do you mean in terms of you wear what you want to wear, mm -hmm. if you want to cry, you cry, if you want to show love, you want to hug a man, mm -hmm. you don't care. Mm -hmm. do you, is, your, is your reality that as Derek, I don't care what I'm supposed to do, I'm going to do what I feel I should do. Yeah, and I, I think it's also about, you know, interrogating yourself very, very seriously because masculinity, the way it's, you know, forced upon us, you're unaware of how subtle it can be. So you're aware of like the big things like, oh, be a man, be strong, mm. don't cry, all those kind of things. But there's, there's, it's layers. there's layers, yeah, there's things under the surface that you won't even realize that you're doing. You won't realize that it's, it's part of, you know, 
uh, masculinity is mm-hmm. making you behave this way or mm-hmm. certain thing. In terms of even crying, sometimes I feel like crying and I know I should be crying, but it's hard to cry. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? It's almost like I have to force it out. But then I think if I have to force it, that can't be healthy either. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, I, yeah, like definitely distance myself from so where I want to wear, you know, if I see my boy or something, I'm like, bro, you're looking really good looking today. Like all those little kind of things, like just, just say what you want to say. Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't matter yeah. how you say it. Do you know what I mean? Because we're all humans, as you said, like we're all humans. We're all three dimensional. We all have moments. We all think things, you know, differently. Mm-hmm. Like even though masculinity has shaped us, we still think certain things. But what masculinity stops us from doing is expressing yeah. mm-hmm. those things. Do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? And I think that's the key to say that, that okay, it's okay for me to say this or mm-hmm. think this or feel this or touch this person like this. Do you know what I mean? Or talk to them in a, in in a certain way. So, yeah, yeah, and it's, it's it's really about introspection and just really kind of self evaluation and mm. questioning why you do certain things. Why do you like certain things? You know, why why do I think that? Where does this opinion come from? Did I form this opinion myself, or is it something that it seems organic in my mind? Mm-hmm. If it's organic, then you've been taught it unless you've actually thought about it yourself you know mm. battled with yourself and said okay this is the conclusion that i've come to do you know what i mean, yeah, I mean. um and it's, it's difficult to do you know when people say un- you have to unlearn things they talk about it like it's something you can do in a couple of weeks yeah. i mean if i've been conditioned for 30 years to be mm. masculine it's gonna take me probably 45 years yeah, to, to get rid of that. get rid of yeah. everything and yeah. it's a constant thing mm. i don't think we would ever i think for my generation especially it's about now as you said, talking mm. to the, the youngers, talking to the younger boys and helping them not be conditioned in the same way we were. Mm-hmm. It's hard for us to get out of it now, mm-hmm. you know, in, 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 in a way we're, we're effed yeah. in, mm. in, in a certain way, but we can really help the next generation. That's what I've tried to do in my book as well. I want to get to your book in, in just a little yeah. bit. Um, I want to move on now to the role, Kemi, that men play with, 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 within the family and the household. Mm. So as someone with a family, mm. is when you first had your children, mm. was this something that you had to think about? What kind of man do I want to be or, or dad to my kids? What kind of man do I want to be to my, to my wife? Was this something that you had to think about at all? Or was it quite natural and you were just you and just doing what you do? I think I have thought about it much more um, formally in relation to fatherhood than partnership. Okay. So I have two daughters and what kind of girls do I want them? What kind of women? What kind of people really do mm. I want them to grow up to be? And I, do, do you have, do you have children? I'm one month away from having my first girl. Oh, yeah, oh so I'm listening like, <laughs> <laughs> it, it, so let, sorry. I, yeah, I know you asked me a question, but I just have to say, Go on. but uh, do you, your father? No, no. Right. So becoming a parent mm. is the single best thing you will ever do Amen, in your entire Amen, life you. it is just amazing i mean it, all of the things it is hard work it is terrifying yeah. it is exhausting it is confusing expensive. it is expensive like you one other thing your your life as you know it now yeah. is <laughs> over yeah it is over something new right something new yeah. but you get a whole new life yeah, uh, in exciting. return but you're then as a as a father to girls you are you enter into you, you I, you begin to see the way the world is so heavily gendered mm. in so many ways in favor, in favor of boys. Mm. Um, and the, uh, I know this is a discussion about masculinity, mm. but obviously masculinity can't really exist without a concept of femininity. And for all the faults of being strong, you know, a, a, and needing to, needing to be the provider and needing mm. to be impervious, weakness, the simpering, the 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 um the kind of empty person that goes along with what the 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 male partner wants you see that being kind of foisted on on little girls mm. and w- so what do i mean i mean when you go into a, a toy shop and there's a boy section and a girl section and the boy section is the doctor and the girl section is the nurse the pink and the blue mm-hmm. the, and and it's really it's terrifying and horrifying and ugly and disgusting to see one's daughters uh, being forced into a gender role that I don't think is particularly helpful. So bringing this back to, you know, my role as a father, finding myself fighting against this social conditioning. That they must pick this particular lane. Yeah. And it, and it, and it happens 
the moment the child is born because the mm -hmm. clothes will either arrive in pink or blue. Mm -hmm. And uh, and you put a boy in pink clothes because what well, that's the clothes that have been handed down and people they they know mm -hmm. and all of this all of this creates an imbalance in the way that we bring our children up. And we, you have to, we have to fight so hard as parents to say to little girls, well, of course you should climb the tree. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, mm. Or kick like, a ball. Yeah. Or whatever that, yeah. or, uh, you know, you know, f f I find myself fighting against the, that impetus that you see all around you where little girls are, you know, regularly told, well, you know, if you're playing with the paints. Can you just be careful you don't mess up your lovely mm. new dress? It's like, no, man, mess the dress up because the painting is more important mm -hmm. than yeah. what you look like. Mm -hmm. All right. That's true. You know? That's true. Mm -hmm. and, but people don't say that to boys. No. It's like, oh, look at him getting stuck up the tree or, yeah. oh, he scuffed his knees again. Oh, you know, he's a cheeky little one, isn't he? Yeah, boys you know? be boys. But yeah, yeah, and, and um, all children should be cheeky little ones. Yeah. Well, this, this, this triggers, <laughs> right. a, no, no, I, 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 I agree. All children should be up to mischief. Yeah. This, 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 this triggers a point <laughs> right. I want to bring up. Have you guys seen the, the, the Gillette advert? Yeah. That causes yes. controversy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't, yeah. no. You yeah. haven't seen that. Yeah. So this yeah. was an advert that yeah. Gillette put out that was, um, Zeke, help me out. What, what, what yeah, was? So it's, it's, I mean, you know, Gillette is, if you think of a brand that's about being a man. Best man. Best best man we all know the, the, the slogan. Yeah. The, the best, best a man, man can get. 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 Yeah. <laughs> it's basically. So they ran a uh, campaign, which was, um, it didn't really know the message until the end, but it was a series of men, um, you know, putting themselves forward for, um, you know, gender equality and, you know, it's okay if, you know, he does this or she does that. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think this, they kind of worked on the slogan. Um, in, sorry if I'm incorrect, you know, the best, you know, it takes something else to be a man, you know, like they're being proper PC about it. Mm. And it got a lot of backlash from and men. I didn't understand like, this why. is our brand. It's, it's not for you to tell us how to be a man and, uh, and whatnot. But I think I'll tell you why I think it didn't go down well. Mm. It was clumsy and in, in, it was basic, inelegant. It was, very it was very it was American just, and cheesy. Yeah. Yeah. But I think the message was fine. The message, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't have a problem per se with the message. Yeah, I, yeah, I agree. Mm. It just, they did it in a very cack handed, obvious way. Mm. So that, that was done by the same agency that I think that did this girl can, mm. okay. which I thought was brilliant. Yeah. Was, was one of the best campaigns I've seen for a very long time because it just showed women in all their strength and glory and whatever mm. Mm. and wobbles getting with it, man, and yeah. doing the park run yeah. or, and, and sweating hard and on the bike yeah, and, yeah. you know, and I'd look to my female friends and think, well, I look like that in the gym and you should, and you should, I would hate mm. for you to not go to the gym or not play netball you because you're worried about what blokes mm. are going to think, man, or other girls. Sh so mm. it was curious to me that that Gillette mm. ad, which came from, I think, a good place, which yeah. is mm. let's try and reshape this, this oppressive death sentence of masculinity mm -hmm. by, in, you know, saying to little boys, well, you know, it's more than about fighting and being strong, but it just, it was a bad, yeah. it, it was a bad delivery. No, it was, it was, it was, it wasn't good at all. Um, on, on the family thing though, going back to that, Derek, mm. do you think that a lot of men or do a lot of your guy friends who are in families and maybe have kids and a wife still have that kind of mindset of provider, protector? I'm the one that must be the stronger being mm -hmm. because my wife needs to be protected. Or do you feel we're going into a place now where that's just dead now? That's, that's old school. Do a lot of your friends still feel they have to be the man? That's a difficult question to answer just because none of my friends are married, okay. you know. Um, but if I take like my uncles and my dad as an example, um, cause I have some, some quite young uncles as well. Um, yeah, they do, but in, in, a, in, a, in a very different kind of way, it's, it's almost like I'm supposed to be the provider. I'm supposed to be the man and do all these kind of things, but there are allowances to make them um, feel comfortable for example um, uh, like my uncles and that they don't mind their wife going and making more money than mm -hmm. them and then giving the money to them do you know what I mean mm -hmm. even if they've got a job they're happy oh if she makes more money fine the money's coming back to me anyway so let me ask you on, on, on that point a lot of my guy friends say the same thing they have no problem with their partners mm. earning more money with the, than, than them I, I want my partner to earn as much money as hey, she possibly can well, <laughs> and, 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 and I can retire and, and, because, <laughs> and, and because I know you I believe you mm. but I'm wondering do a lot of men say that but really if it, when it comes down to it mm. there's a little bit inside this thinking I'm slightly failing here I don't know do you think it's, a lot of men still feel that at all or Probably it's it, this is something I've never really been able to get my head around, but um, 
Pro- I mean, yeah, they probably do. I'm maybe. I mean, I think the the common <laughs> consensus is that they they feel what is it, emasculated. Yeah. They they mm-hmm. feel like oh, they're they're because they're men. They're supposed to be the heads of the house and have the most money and mm-hmm. so on and, so, and distribute money, mm-hmm. so on and so forth. But I that it just. It just doesn't make, it doesn't make much sense to me. Um, it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's an odd one, actually. What about religion? Mm. Do, do, does anybody feel that religion plays a role in telling men, again, what they should be and how they should be? Yes. Um, and I won't speak specifically on religion, more culture for mm-hmm. me. I kind of put religion and culture in a sense, because one religion would be different across multiple cultures. Sure, sure. Um, so I think culture definitely has a say in that. Because if you just compare, say, the, the West with, um, you know, parts of Africa and, and the Middle East, the roles of men and women are completely different because that's, that's their, that's their environment. That's what they know. Um, there, there's schools of thought that, you know, the family unit is stronger in certain areas than it is in the West mm-hmm. because there's a, you know, we, we, you spoke about, Camille, about, um, females, um, girls being told, you know, be as good as, 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 as the boys that, like, you know, again, they're also being told you can do whatever mm-hmm. you want, yep. you know. In certain other parts of the world, that isn't the, the story that they're told. It's, it's that, you know, you are, you know, you are the giver of life. So mm-hmm. take care of yourself and take care of this home and raise mm-hmm. these children so that the man could go out and provide, mm-hmm. you know. So there's, there's no right and wrong. But I think in terms of the uh, situation whereby, you know, if my partner earned more um, than me, that's possible now in the West with technology. And it's, it's, it's not an industrial age anymore. It's not about how much I could put on my back or mm-hmm. how far down I could go into a mine. It's about how smart you can be and, and, you know, press this button or that button. So it's male and female were kind of on part in, mm-hmm. that, in, in that sense. So it's very likely that could happen. And are you totally comfortable with that? I'm comfortable with that because it's not so much about the money. It's like your situation is different to my situation. Um, and you're pulling in this amount of money. I'm pulling in this amount of money. That's mm-hmm. okay. But that's easier said than done. But there's a fundamental understanding that needs to be in place for that to be okay. And understanding from, and I think women, black women in particular, have a big role to play in the, the mental health of black men. Because an appreciation that as black men, we are told a story. We are going through from a very young age experiences that make you feel like you have to be the stoic person. You have to be the provider. Mm-hmm. So when you're in a relationship and then there's a situation whereby you may feel emasculated because, mm-hmm. um, you know, I'm earning more money than you then you ha- there, there has to be an extra effort to say, I know you've got us. I know you're d- you are my man mm-hmm. and I know you're going to take care of us with your, both of your hands, both of your feet, but this is the situation and this can help us mm-hmm. as a family. That, I can't speak for everyone else's reality, but I feel my relationship, that's an understanding we have, you know? So if you're earning money and I need three months off to do something, then that's okay. You've got, I you've don't got feel, me. Yeah, I don't feel emasculated by that. Mm-hmm. But I know if um, my partner isn't able to contribute, then I'm also going to take care um, of everything. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, that does. Totally. So I think there's a big role um, for um, women to play in, women to play, um, in mm-hmm. that as well. Okay. Yeah, you know, it's about partnership, isn't it? Mm. And um, clearly everybody comes to this with a different preconception of what it is their role is. Mm. But... Um, I would like to think that our generation and younger, when they start to build a home and consider bringing children into the world, that you look at each other and you think, you know, well, what what can I bring to this? Mm. It may, it might be, you know, I'll speak from my family situation. My sister uh, is the breadwinner, mm-hmm. and her partner is a writer, mm. and so he does most of the childcare and stays at home and does most of the home stuff, mm-hmm. and she brings the and that's the you know they mm. look it, it, for them it was not just an issue of money it was an issue of well, what do i want to do my sister's a statistician she works does numbers she can't you know she, she goes to a job to do that whereas as a writer you need to sit and write and he produces creative stuff mm-hmm. so for them it it that was the obvious solution mm-hmm. that won't work for everyone mm-hmm. we as a society need to move to a place where people consider that partnership to you know there's it's the it's the three prong theory of relationships. There's the two people, and then there's the re- the relationship itself mm-hmm. is an entity, mm-hmm. and both people bring to that relationship what needs to be brought to mm-hmm. keep the thing stable. Mm-hmm. Um, Derek, you've written a book. Tell us about your book yes. and um, how this fits into 
our, our discussion. Well, I didn't write all of it. Okay. Yeah. You, you put together a book. I have to clarify. Yeah, okay. yeah. I put together the book, so I edited it, and it's, there's 20 writers in here, okay. including right. myself. Um, and it's literally about, it's like I was saying, um, I was saying to you before, it's a, it's a humanizing project. It's, mm-hmm. it's about, it's not, it's not, it's not a polemic. It's not, it's political by nature, but it's not a book that's aimed to try and convince people of anything except that black men are three dimensional people. We're mm-hmm. human. You know, we have flaws. You know, we, you know, but we also have things that, we go through that we would like to talk about and be helped with, mm-hmm. you know, and just picking up what you were saying is that, you know, you know, black women need to be helping us. I, I, I agree, but I would, I would frame it as we need to be helping each other. Mm. Um, just because, you know, I mean, historically it's kind of been like black women have had to do a lot for black men, but it hasn't been reciprocated. Mm. Um, so I, I do agree. Yeah. But I would say we need to do a lot for each other. And I think um, what I've tried to do with this book is, Add to a discourse that's currently taking place in the UK, mm. um, and also try and separate Black British men from African American men because although we do have similar realities, a lot of the time is conflated. So what is written about a Black um, African American man mm-hmm. is then basically taken on a, as being us. about yes, yeah. Black British men. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. For example, when I go into like a Waterstones and I'm looking through the shelf and I'm looking for something that relates to Black British men, I struggle. Like I really, really struggle because everything. You know, Cornel West, Bell Hooks, all of that mm. stuff. Yeah, exactly. It's all, a, it's all about Afri- the African-American experience. What's the book called? It's called Safe. Brilliant. Um, mm. When is it out? March 8th. March the 8th. Perfect. Next week. Um, I want to just finish on one final point that you, mm. I think, alluded to earlier on about domestic violence. And I'm mm. wondering how close the link is between the per- perceived man being man and masculine mm. and the high rates of, of domestic violence. And is, is that an outlet or a place where people... Of men mm. who feel like they can't be themselves anywhere else. Mm. They have to assert that kind of mm. power for some reason mm. within the household. Um, the honest answer is I don't know, mm-hmm. to be honest with you. I don't know. But I, I, I think it will definitely be linked with the idea that as being a man, you need to dominate your surroundings, right? Um, and if you're... I'm, pick my words and what I say very carefully because I'm not an expert on the subject. But I do feel like if a... We are powerful beings, mm-hmm. you know, um, and as black men, powerful beings. And if you're not given the, the space to be a human being, mm. it's just a case of just being who you are, then you're caged, you know, mm-hmm. you're caged. This goes for black women as well. You're caged. So if you don't have the opportunity to express mm-hmm. when you're in a heightened situation, it might be an argument, it might be something that doesn't go well for you. Mm-hmm. You know, I feel like there's a lot of power that comes out. And that can be, um, that, that could come out in, in, in terms of domestic violence. Mm-hmm. That could come out in terms of, um, you know, the angry black woman, mm-hmm. um, term mm-hmm. that, that's there. Or that might come out in you lashing out to your parents or not listening in school. But it's just that constraining nature of, um, a lot of people's own realities mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. when they get confronted with, um, uh, with, uh, with conflict, mm-hmm. then, there's less, in my opinion, control of how to deal with that, you know, because it, it, there's a lot. Of pa- it, does that make sense? It do, no, it does. And on, and on that, do you feel that masculinity, and I know this is a phrase trying to move away from, but is there a parallel between what is masculine and how we, how black men, folks on black men, discipline their children? Absolutely. Do you think there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a correlation between the two? Yeah. I would say, obviously, you know, I can't speak for all uh, black men, but obviously as, uh, someone who's, you know, of Ghanaian origin, the way my dad sees being masculine as a Ghanaian man Mm -hmm. is very, as what you say, perfect word, stoic. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It's kind of like, like I've never physically touched my dad in my life. Do you know what I mean? Really? Never in my life. Like I've never, I think I've had like a conversation with him that's lasted about five minutes and it's always him telling me something. He's very quiet in the house. Do you know what I mean? It's almost like someone does something or, if the house is quiet, he's watching TV, someone knocks something over and it makes, it disrupts the silence. He just looks and then everyone's like, oh, sorry. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's, that's an experience that a lot of my, my friends, my cousins, they will experience. Do you know what I mean? And it's, it's bizarre because, you know, he'll be like that in the house and then go upstairs, someone will call him and he's lively, like he's in a rave mm. or something. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> he's, he's like, he's a completely different person. And I know it's because he thinks that he has to be like that sure. with yeah. his children. Like, you know, the, the, uh, you know, the, um, African saying, or oh, 
I'm not your classmate. Yeah. I'm not your friend. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that's yeah, yeah. really yeah. what goes through his mind. And do, do you agree that there's a, there's a, there is a parallel between how black men have traditionally disciplined their children aligning with what they per- perceived back in the day to be a man and a masculine man? Uh, yes. But I also think there are a million exceptions that, that disprove that rule. Mm-hmm. And I, I realize I've used my own family as, you know, examples already in this discussion. No, 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 that's irrelevant. But I look at, you mentioned your father, I look at my father, uh, Nigerian. He's nearly 80. So you would expect, um, you would expect him, you would expect many things, many stereotypes mm-hmm. to apply. Uh, and he's the most, he's the most unusual and remarkable person one of the most unusual people i've ever met mm-hmm. so let's just start with some basic stuff he's a brilliant cook <laughs> why is he a brilliant cook well part of that's because he was an immigrant and he came with his cousin brother yeah he had to learn to cook mm-hmm. so he learned to cook when he was a young man and has carried that through and now cooks all kinds of things from all corners of the globe mm-hmm. he's he is the most committed grandparent i could ever imagine i'm very lucky he lives quite close to me but i remember after my my first daughter was born mm-hmm. he took me so i said listen and I, well, I'm, incre- I'm even luckier in that my in-laws also live very close. So we have a very good network built in. And my dad said to me, he said, it's only natural when the, ch- when the first child is born that the, the mother's mother, mm. it, it, just because of the way thing, the world works, is, gonna, is likely to be very closely involved in the mm. rearing of, of your children. And that's brilliant and it's beautiful and please use that. He said, but I want you to know that your mother will be very upset if... If, oh, sorry, not upset, disappointed if you don't include her too. Mm. I was like, oh, dad, that's mm. really, thank you. That's really perceptive and nuanced. And I, I'm really grateful that you pointed that out because I just, you know, I'm a bloke. I don't think about that. <laughs> <You're right>. just, <laughs> you know, I just, what I realized some months after, given that my dad was like basically at my house every day bringing food and saying, can I help? Mm. He didn't mean, your mother will be disappointed if you. He meant I will. Be. <laughs> I will be disappointed if you don't include me in the rearing. She's my grandchild. Yes. She's my granddaughter, yes. and I and I want to be part of her life. Yes. And I would. And to this day, I mean, my daughter, my eldest, is eleven. He's still. I mean, all the grandparents are amazing mm. and will contribute when. But he is the one who will drop ev- anything and everything and mm. say yes. I'll be there in half an hour. Emergency, whatever mm. you know. And. When when she was very young, the nappy might have been on backwards and inside, <laughs> and, but it didn't matter because the love was there. Yeah, brilliant. So one sentence before we wrap up, one sentence each. What for you should masculinity be? It should be nothing. You should just be who you are and not, uh, uh, not, not ascribe any kind of social creation to who you are, how you behave. Be yourself. Just be yourself. Jimmy? Uh, well, I, I would I would add to that, and I would say there are elements of masculinity that I think are really valuable. Mm-hmm. So you know, being being strong and providing are are aspects of humanity mm-hmm. that uh, femininity should include that as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in a in a sense, it's it's you know, be who you are and don't be afraid of mm. who you are. And if if you want to be the strong provider, that's cool. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah. Finally, Zeke. Yeah, similar to you, Kemi. I think it should be... Pick your own light, man. Why are you picking back <laughs> no, no, no. If it makes sense, it makes sense. <laughs> like, there's no right or wrong. I, 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 I think it should be a formula to success in certain scenarios mm-hmm. that works for you. Mm. Um, it shouldn't be who you are. I don't think it, it makes sense to define yourself as masculine. It's not a way of being. Like, mm-hmm. if, if, it, if, if you can pull the tools or the facets of being masculine into a situation and it works for you, it's all about workability. Um, I think I think it has its place so as a formula mm-hmm. to success or to achieving a goal. Brilliant. Great chat, guys. Um, that's mm-hmm. it for this week, guys. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel here on Black Academic TV across all of our socials as well. Until next week, peace. Mm-hmm.